A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. When the western United States was first opened to settlers, many criminals traveled to the new territory in the hope of finding easy wealth. They soon realized, however, that wealth could only be purchased by hard work, so they turned to robbery and cattle rustling. It was these men that the masked rider of the plains fought so tirelessly. It was only through his efforts that law and order was finally established on the frontier. And now return with us to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Prairie Grove. Tell us waiting on the trail ahead. Hello, Silver. Hello. Our story opens in the town of Prairie Grove a typical frontier settlement in southwestern Texas. It is late afternoon, and Clem Barton, a rancher, hurriedly enters the small post office on the main street. Fred. Hey, Fred. I'm in a doggone big hurry. You got any mail for me? Hmm, might have. Well, then give it to me quick. I'm looking for something special. Now, just hold your horses. I'll have a look. Offhand, can't exactly recollect whether there was something for you or not. Don't be so fired slow about it. Just a second, just a second. Yep, yeah, here's something. This is yours, I reckon. What are you being so blame hasty about? I got to meet Banker Shaw at 5 o'clock, that's why, and it's just about 5 now. Oh, here, give me that. You're meeting Banker Shaw? I am, but this is what I'm looking for. Yippee, this is it, all right. If you're planning to see the bank here, you better get a hustle on. He's getting ready to take that stage. What's that? Look for yourself, you don't believe me. There's a stage just across the street. Well, of all the... <laughs> Looks to me like he kind of forgot about you. Well, I'll catch him. Hi there, Banker Shaw. Hey. You calling me, Clem? Gosh, Mr. Shaw, what are you doing with your bag all packed and everything? You ain't forgot our business, have you? Eh, business? What business? You know, the ranch, the mortgage. Mortgage? I thunder claim it clean slipped my mind. Gosh, I was hoping we'd get things cleared up today. Look, Mr. Shaw, step back away so those folks won't hear us, won't you? The stage won't be leaving for a couple minutes yet. Well, come along. Now, what is it that's a doggone secret? Well, it's like this, Mr. Shaw. I just now got the cash I sent for to pay off the mortgage. And I'd sure hate like blazes to take the risk of keeping it on me. Well, that's a shame, Clem. I'm sure sorry I forgot about our appointment. If I wasn't going to Gold City, you could give me the cash now, and then you wouldn't have to worry about it. But, uh, but can't you put off your trip till tomorrow, Mr. Shaw? Sorry, Clem. My business there is a sight too important for that. Well, then how about leaving the cash in your bank for the night? Now, Clem, you know better than that. The bank's closed up tight this late in the day. Of course, you could have them take care of it over to the cafe. After all the holdups has been, 
Not by a blame sight. Then I reckon you'll just have to take it home with you again. But uh, when are you coming back? When? Oh, I'll be back tomorrow evening. I'm just staying overnight. Could I see you tomorrow night, then? Mm, yes, I suppose you could. Of course, the mortgage ain't due for another week yet. But I won't feel real easy keeping $5,000 out to the ranch. And I don't blame you, Clem. Well, let's say you meet me tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, then. That good enough? Oh, that'd do just fine. Get aboard, folks. We're set to travel. Well, the stage is ready to leave, Clem. Sorry I couldn't do no better for you. Oh, we'll make out, I reckon. So long, Mr. Shaw. Tomorrow at 10, then. Good day to you. I'm right in, Mr. Shaw. We're near to five minutes late getting started already. I'm ready, driver. Get up there. Get along with you. Get along with you. You ain't forgot the time, have you, Clem? Huh, Sophie? Well, what time is it? Most nine o'clock. You said you had to be to meet Mr. Shaw in town at ten. Oh, gosh, I was near forgetting. Get the cash out of the cupboard for me, won't you, Sophie? I'll have to make tracks. Uh -huh, I'll get it. Uh, my hat. Uh, where in blazes is my hat? Your hat's on the chair where you put it. I declare when you get fussed, you never know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I reckon I'm just feeling good knowing the mortgage is going to be paid up, honey. Well, it was mighty nice of your brother Ned to give us a lend of it. Well, you'd better be careful with it. From what he says, things being the way they are back east, he won't be able to send you no more. Uh, you bet I'll be careful. Here it is, Clem. Now, you put it in a good, safe place. Yeah. There. It won't fall out of that inside pocket, I reckon. Now, where'd you say my hat was? Oh, oh here it is. Oh, you hurry to town. The horse is all saddled outside. Nice moonlit night to ride. Well, you take care of yourself. Uh, who in the blazes is that? Whoever it is, don't you stop to talk to him. You just keep going. An engine. Oh. What you want, Redskin? Don't stand there, Clem. I'll deal with the engine. I'm a going, honey. All right, engine. Uh, what you say you want it? Me want food. Yeah. Me pay you. Food? <laughs> well, land sake, we ain't got a whole lot on hand, but you're welcome to share. It's just for yourself. No. Me got friend. Oh, there's two of you. Another redskin, huh? Uh, him white friend. White friend? Then why don't he come up and ask for the grub instead of sending an engine after it? I is that him standing below in the shadows? Uh. Oh, well, I reckon it don't matter, though. You just wait till I have a look in the kitchen and I'll see you. There, sharp. Oh, oh, that's the way Clem rode. Hello, oh, fear horse. Something's happened. Me come. Stranger, don't let nothing happen to Clem. Help him. Hurry, fellow. Uh -huh. Hit me ready. Come on, Get on, scout. Come on, Silverboy. That's it, fellow. Shout, keep him the trail, Tonto. Not right. Sounded like a rifle. Uh -huh. Hurry, Silver, old fellow. Come on there, Silverboy. That's it, old fellow. You, look. There's a horse. There's a man lying on the trail. Uh, oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. What's the matter left the ranch house when you knocked on the door? Uh, him. Him, same fellow. He's not dead. Bullet cut cross head. Yes. Didn't wound him seriously, but it was enough to knock him out. Oh, no. Him come too. He'll be conscious oh. in a moment. Look, Tonto. The shot must have come from behind that cut bank. It's a perfect spot to hide if you wanted to drag out some man on this trail. Uh, uh. The man who fired the shot could follow down the gulch and make his escape unseen. Oh, the, the cash. He'll be all right, friend. The bullet only scraped your scalp. Uh, wait, I, I gotta look. The cash. You were carrying money? It, it's gone. It was stolen? How much did you have? Five thousand dollars in folded money. Five thousand dollars and all of it borrowed. What? You're masked. You're the fellow that shot me. Were you... Easy, Clem. Your wife can prove we were at the ranch house when the shot was fired. But, and but we I... didn't know you were carrying money on you. Here, feel well enough, ride back to the house. Just, just let me rest a minute, stranger. Can you answer some questions? Huh? What questions? How many people knew you had that money? Nobody. That cash come from the east, and I never told nobody about getting it. No one at all? Well, I did tell Banker Shaw, but he don't count. What I mean is, it was him I was taking the cash to. So he'd have just as much reason as me for keeping it secret. I see. Oh, oh doggone this head. You see... Banker Shaw holds a mortgage on my place, and I was going to pay it off tonight. A mortgage for $5,000? Uh-huh. But from what I've seen of your place, it isn't worth that much. Well, as a matter of fact, stranger, it ain't. But when I asked for that 5000 I needed it bad. 
And if the banker was willing to lend it, I wasn't going to put up no objections. Then Shaw would be more anxious to have you pay the mortgage than to take over your ranch. Shucks, I ain't suspecting him, stranger. You just asked me who knew about the cash, and I told you. Of course, he might have been careless and said something that was overheard. Banker Shaw don't ever say anything careless-like. And besides, he couldn't have told nobody. We fixed up our meeting tonight just when he got on the stage yesterday. He's been out of town ever since. The stage is only due in now. We're going to try and get your money back for you, Clem. Say, do you mean that? We do. Gosh, you're sure a strange sort of fellow to be wearing a mask and riding with a redskin. We're not crooks, Clem. Do you think you can make it back to the house now? Your wife will be worried. I don't reckon I can. Give me your hand, will you? Here. Oh, my head's like to split. Here. Oh, oh thanks, Injun. I'll help you, Clem. Yep. Uh, golly, I sure don't know what I'm going to say to Sophie when I get home. I'll sure get a tongue lashing with the cash gone and no way to borrow more. Steady, Silver. How soon does the mortgage have to be paid, Clem? Well, there's just six days left. A lot can happen in six days. You ready, Tonto? Huh? Be ready. Say, which way are you heading? Ain't you going back to the house with me? Not now, Clem, but we'll see you later. I'll see you later. Well, if they ain't the blamedest fellas I ever seen. That night, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, made camp. But the next morning, they returned to the dry gulch to search for some trace of the man who had robbed Clem Barton. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, oh, oh steady, boy. Oh, it's it was too dark to follow the trail last night, Kimosabe. The moonlight didn't help any in this gully, but we may find something today. Oh, there, empty shell. Yes. <laughs> Look, here's where the man kneeled to shoot. You can see the mark of his knee in the soft earth. Oh, that, that right. And there are hoof prints. Horse got broken shoe. A broken shoe on the left forefoot. There was a small horse. You can see how light the prints are. Isn't that right. Here's where he left the gulch. I'm afraid we can't trail him, Toto. No. Him ride on hard ground. Him not leave trail. He evidently knew what he was about. Now what we do? There's some things I don't understand, Tonto. The outlaw must have known Clem had that money. That's right. But Clem says the banker was the only one to know. If he'd loaned more than the ranch was worth, he stood to lose if the money wasn't delivered. Uh, here, Silver. Here, Scout. We're going to town, Kimosabe. You, you, you've got plans? Not yet. But the things I want to find out. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. Two hours later, the Lone Ranger, disguised but without his mask, sat at a table in the cafe with Tonto. They watched a hard-faced man called Pete as he talked with the banker. Hello, the hoof prints left by Pete's horse are exactly the same as those we saw in the ghost. Uh, I wonder what business he could have with the banker. It looked plenty strange. Too bad we can't hear them. At least we can stay and see what happens. <laughs> Well, Mr. Shaw, I better be on my way. Even already? Yeah, I gotta. But I'll be seeing you again. Uh-huh. Maybe there'll be some more business we can do together. I sure hope so. Hey, Clem. What happened to your head, Clem? Did you get in the shooting screen? Hey, hold on and tell us about it. Not now, boys. I gotta talk to Mr. Shaw. Howdy, Mr. Shaw. Can I sit down? Go right ahead. Thank you. Now, maybe you'll let me know what you gotta say for yourself. You kept me waiting last night till after midnight. Mr. Shaw, I was shot at. That's how I come to be wearing this bandage. Shot at? And the cash stole from me. Well, uh, who done it? Well, that's something I don't know. The only fellas I seen was a masked man and an engine that rode up when they heard the shot. The bullet knocked me out cold. A masked man and a redskin? Why, there, the crooks have stole your cash. You're mistaken, Mr. Shaw. Sophie says they was at the house when the shot was fired. Then they had a partner with them. Don't you see it? Their partner could have shot you, then rode off. Them other fellas talked to Sophie so they'd have an alibi. Then they rode up and stole the cash off you while you were still out. And it worked because you was injured enough to think the same fellow that shot you must have got the cash. Say, do you really think that? I'll bet every penny in my bank it's so. Mr. Shaw, it wouldn't surprise me none if you was right. Huh? Hey, look over there. That's the same engine. And that fellow with him. He's about the same build. We'll find that... out about this. Man, grab that redskin and his friend. Get a hold of them. There they go. Out of their way. 
through them. Get through the door. They're heading for their horses. Grab your gun. Make them stop. There they are. Drill them. Oh, they're moving too fast. Ben, this is a job for the sheriff. Tell them Clem just had $5,000 stolen. And those are the fellas that stole it. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue the story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, suspected of the theft of Clem's money, made their escape from town. Their great horses carried them safely beyond pursuit, but that night, they returned under cover of darkness. That's Pete's place up ahead, isn't it, Tonto? Uh-huh. And there, like in cabin. That means he's still at home. Tonto, we've got to make him talk. Mm, not right. The man who would fire from cover must be a coward. I think we can persuade him to confess whether he planned that robbery alone or whether someone else gave him his instructions. Uh, someone must have told Pete about the money. Maybe banker, tell him. Shaw loaned more money than the ranch was worth. But Clem forgot that the banker could have hired someone to steal the money and that way get the ranch, too. Not right. Hello. Just saw Pete through the window. Oh, oh, oh Silver. Oh, come on. Oh. Yeah. may not be alone. We'll have to take a chance. Oh, that's right. Come What the? We're going to have a talk, Pete. A mask, man. You... Don't slap, mother. Get out of here. Alone, huh? Take his gun, Tonto. I ain't got it. Leave my shooting line alone. What's the idea? He's got guns. Good. Throw it aside. Get the hold up. No, Pete. But you're going to tell us about your hold up. Huh? You shot Clem. He stole the cash he was bringing to town. You're loco. You can't lie out of it, Pete. You shot him from the dry gulch next to the trail. We found the prints of your horse. My horse? We didn't know it was yours until we saw you ride up at the cafe today. But when you did, it gave your game away. That ain't so. Who was your partner, Pete? Partner? Someone told you Clem had that money. I have a good idea who that person was. But I want the information from you. Now, look here. Are you going to talk? (laughs) Talk, I said. Talk or take the beating of your life. Quit shaking me. I've got no mercy for a crook like you. Talk. That's only a start. Get up. Wait, I... Stand by the door, Tonto. If it makes a break for it, stop him. Him not get away. Don't hit me. You're bringing this on yourself, Pete. You can save yourself by telling me what I want to know. I don't know nothing. Very well. Stand back. Ask for it. Don't, don't. I'll talk. Let me loose. I'll talk. Honest, I will. Just don't beat me up. Quick. It, it was this way. I I was down by the cafe the other day. And then this fellow... found out the name of the man who gave Pete his information, Tonto. But there's still more to do. Steady, Silver. What? What's that? We've got to trick him into returning the money. It won't help Clem to get the guilty man if the money isn't found. You got plans? I have. We're going to call on the banker. Hi, old Silver! Open this door. Just a second. Come on, Tonto. Inside. And close the door, Shaw. The, the masked man Clem told me about. Right. At the same engine. You didn't think we'd be back in town, did you? The sheriff's looking for you fellas. I'll tell you. You're not leaving the house. And if you try to reach that rifle hanging above the fireplace, you'll never make it. I can draw before you've taken another step. You can't get away with it. We'll this. see about that. So I know who's responsible for the theft of Clem's money. You ought to know. You took it. That accusation won't stand, Shaw. Tonto and I can prove we're innocent. You can't. What's more, you're going to help us prove it. What's that? I meant exactly what I said. Are you a friend of Clem's? I am. And you want his money returned to him? Of course I do. Then listen to me and stop looking toward your gun. You'll listen whether you like it or not. The following day, Shaw, the banker, entered the cafe, looked around a moment, then made his way toward a man standing at the end of the bar. Hello, Mr. Shaw. Howdy, fellas. Hello there, Jake. 
Afternoon, Fred. Howdy, Mr. Shaw. Looking for something to settle the dust in your throat? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Have one with me, Fred? Glad to. Say, what are you so pleased about? I ain't seen you with such a grin in your face since you shot the fellas that try to hold up your bank. <laughs> Just had a stroke of luck, that's all. Yeah? Come on. Let's sit over that table here and I'll tell you about it. Hey, barkeep. Two of the usual. Bring them to our table. Sure thing, Mr. Shaw. Sit down, Fred. There. Now, what in blazes is it all about? <laughs> I suppose you know I'm holding the mortgage on Clem's ranch. <laughs> that ain't nothing for you to be grinning about. No. Give him 5000 for that mortgage, didn't you? Yep. When he got the cash together to pay you off, it was stole from him, wasn't it? It sure was. And he can't get another 5000 to pay you with, can he? Nope. And if you can find anything in that to make you happy, I admire to know what it is. If it was me, I wouldn't give half the size of that mortgage for Clem's place. If you can grin about losing more than $2,000, you must be off your head. You're just postmaster, Fred. Nobody'd expect you to understand these things. <laughs> and you mean to sit there and as much as say you want Clem's place? I ain't said it yet. But that's the fact. It beats me. Here comes the barkeep. <laughs> I reckon you're needing a drink worse than I am. Just set him down, barkeep. This will pay for him. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Shaw. There you are. You can keep the change. You want anything more, just holler. Look here. I've been thinking over what you just said. Yeah? And I've got a notion why you want Clem's ranch. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm betting I ain't. There's something on that ranch that makes it valuable. Now, what would that be? I don't know, but whatever it is, you know about it. Hmm. Maybe it's gold, maybe it's oil, but that don't matter. There's something on or in that ranch worth a heap of cash, something that's got nothing to do with the cattle, because there ain't a cattleman alive would pay you $5,000 for that measly dried-up ranch. Now, come on, tell me what it is. It's been nice talking to you, Fred. Wait, you haven't even tasted your drink. Change my mind, I don't want it. Good day to you, Fred. I savvy why you're leaving. <laughs> I came too blame close to the truth, didn't I? Now it's you that's off your head. See you later. Uh, now I wonder. By heaven, so does thunder, that's it. I'm going to find out. Hey, Fred, what's say with you? Huh? <laughs> you look as though something bit you. Something did, just about. Yeah? You saw me talking to Banker Shaw just now, didn't you? Of course I did. Didn't I bring you your drinks? Barkeep, there's something blame funny going on. Huh? You know what Banker Shaw told me? He wants to foreclose on Clem. He was laughing about it. No. I'm telling you the truth. But but he, he'd be losing money. Barkeep, I'm just wondering if he would. Huh? Don't you tell nobody I said it. But he's got a reason for foreclosing. And just between you and me, Barkeep, maybe that same reason would make him keep Clem from paying off. Mind you, I ain't saying it so. But it seems to me it's a mighty strange thing. Mighty strange. Bankers aim to make himself rich with clam drying. What's that? There's oil or gold on it. Oh, hey, oh, you fat soul. Just what's the banker up to? Yeah, no, I think we'll find out. It was Banker Shaw had Clem robbed. He aims to get his ring. <laughs> He must have been done the banker done it. Why else did he want to foreclose? Oh. No, we, we ought to set the sheriff on him. Sure. Banker done it, sure as shoot. He can't get away with a thing like that. Hanging's too good for a polecat like this. Yes, it is. Shaw, you're in a heap of trouble. Yeah? Ain't you been uptown? Nope, not since the last to talk to you. But everybody's talking about your full clothes, not Lem. They're saying that if you're so blame anxious to get his ranch, maybe you took steps to see that he didn't pay you. Nonsense. Yeah? If you think I'm lying, you just go over to the cafe again and see what happens. Yeah. You mean they really think it was me, Rob Clem? They don't think nothing else. But they know better, Ned. I'm no crook. Why, I wouldn't take a penny I didn't come by honest. You needn't tell me that, I believe you. But it ain't all the folks in town knows you as well as I do. There, there isn't going to be trouble, is there? Look here, Shaw. You and me have known each other since we was young uns. Sure we have. And we've been good friends all that time, too, haven't we? I reckon so. Well, then, you can believe what I'm saying. I've seen some mighty mean crowds. 
I can recollect the time the folks in town raided the jail and hung that crook who shot the other sheriff in the back. Well, I... Just you wait till I'm through talking. What I'm getting at is this. In all the time I've lived in this here town, I ain't never seen a crowd that meant business any more than the one that's gathering uptown tonight. So they're fixing to hang you. Hang me? They put two and two together and decided you're guilty. They haven't any evidence. That's just why they're going to hang you themselves instead of waiting for the law to do it. They can't do that. They saw sure blazes are fixing to do just that. And you got just one chance to save your skin. I, I got a chance, you see? I got it all figured out. The only way you can keep from being hung is to show them you don't want Clem's ranch. What's that? That's this way, Shaw. If you'd said from the first you didn't want the ranch, then they'd never got the notion you was responsible for the holdup. Ain't that so? I, I guess so. Now, if you do something to prove you're willing to give it up, maybe the crowd will change his mind about your being guilty. But, but what can I do? I said we've always been friends, didn't I? I heard you. Well, I'm willing to buy that mortgage from you. Then I'll go uptown and tell the folks you sold it. After that, they'll have to figure you wasn't to blame. I'll take my chances, Fred, before I'll lose my $5,000. You won't be losing it. You mean you'll pay me that much for the mortgage? I will. But just because we're friends. There you are. 5000 even. Now make over the papers in a hurry so I can get back and head off the mob. That won't be necessary, Fred. For what? Where'd you fellas come from? We were hiding behind this other door. And just waiting for you to show us whether you had that cash on you or not. But, Sheriff, The I Sheriff can... has already told the town people who was responsible for the holdup, Fred. The banker won't be bothered. Look here, what in blaze is this all about? Sam, can... bring him in. Here's the other scum. Well, you needn't trouble me. He tried to escape last night, and we forced the truth from him. But Tano and I brought him back. Uh-huh. Then the masked color brought him around to my office and made him tell me who his partner was. You ain't going to believe anything he says, are you? <laughs> Fred, even without Pete testifying again, you, that 5000 you just put on my desk would almost prove it. Where could you have saved $5,000 on the salary of a postmaster? It's a mistake. You're framing it's me. It's no I... mistake. But we nearly made one because Clem thought only the banker knew about his receiving the money. Clem forgot that he opened the envelope which contained it in front of you in your post office. <laughs> but the masked fellow found out the truth all right. And it was the masked man's scheme to make you think there was gold or oil on the ranch, Fred. So you'd hand over the cash you stole. If I get my hands on him, I'll... You him. ain't, Fred. You're going to jail. And, Clem, we might just as well take care of that mortgage right now. The mask fella cleared up the first robbery, but there's no sense in taking chances on another. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>